Good morning. It is 8.30 a.m. the 26th of September. It is Thursday, our second port day of the cruise, and we've just had breakfast. I had the same thing I've been having all week. I had the an egg, ham, and Swiss omelet, and some bacon. That's what I had for breakfast. Um, didn't think you needed to see. We did get to sit at the back of the dining room this morning, so we had a nice window view. We had breakfast with D and J, Carl and Donna. And now we are packing up our bags. We are pulling into port now, into Progresso. So we're packing up our bag and we're gonna go meet everybody downstairs and we're gonna hit this day started. Um, we are going to a cenote and some ruins and we're gonna see all there is to see. This is not a carnival excursion. So I will leave everything for you in the description box. All right, now I'm gonna switch over to my Osmo action and we're gonna finish the rest of this day. If you can wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> let the let the crowds disperse for a minute and then get off the ship. It's a little hectic. Good morning, Progresso. This is our first time here. It is very bright. I have put my sunglasses on. There's the ship. We're just meeting everybody down here. You need your extra dark sunglasses here. <laughs> Yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> Port area. There's quite a bit of shopping. We walked around the duty free shop, and then, but you're still you still have plenty of shopping in here. So. Lots to see. He forgot his hand to roll. And then you followed around, and there is your taxi station. Here is our ride for the day. All right, we're leaving the port on our way to the Hacienda, which has Mayan ruins, a pool, and a cenote. From Welcome to Progreso. Progreso is the most important port to this uh, region, to the, the state, which is Yucatan State, because it's at a part of the peninsula. We have different kinds of ports, but this is the most important. And here you're going to see the longest swam pier because the level of the ocean here is very shallow. It is the reason for which it was necessary to put a very long pier. The first part measured for about six kilometers and then this, which is the extension, four kilometers more. So in total it's for about 10 kilometers. It's the longest one in this country and uh, maybe in the world. Thanks. It is for the, you know, just one on the day or two because here uh, it's very shallow um, to receive the user which is what necessary for the kind of the channel in the Hacienda side because when the Spanish arrive here they start to work with the Mayan people all right we're coming to the end of the 10 kilometer port or road to get to and from the peninsula from the port because the water is quite shallow There's the beach. Break in the seaweed. Yeah. Mayan people, they 
they believe about different kinds of deities, they believe about the natural area, they believe about the rain god, or the which was for a giant, sun god, Christian now, which god you think, for each activity, for the elements, everything they use one god. And this managed to the new religion in this case, and of this way they introduce the church. If you like, we can explore a little bit of the church, you can see. This is an actual functioning church. We're gonna come in and see here. and there's a little market however as you probably know about us we are huge animal lovers and there are a lot of stray dogs here and that's just too much for us so um we're not going to be stepping out to block that because the dogs it's too much it's too hard for us so they got pretty dresses i like all the well we tried some fruit i did i had a grape i had a banana a mango which was tasty very very sweet a banana which was good a little bite of banana and then I tried papaya not a fan of papaya but but it was the mango was really really sweet that's actually the first time in my life I've ever had that so let's hope there's no food allergies <laughs> maybe it wasn't the best time to try a new fruit <laughs> Anyway, but it was very tasty, yep. and they did purchase um, it pizza. The it was part of the tour. Yes, we stopped at the market. We are headed to the ruins. This is the, the situation for which they live the decadence period. Then they uh, resist that kind of situation some uh, uh, about the resident side. For example, the first complex of buildings that you can see with little platforms, they were like a house that we are going to see first. Uh, they were the houses of the leaders who had the control about this land because during the pre-Hispanic time, they had three different social positions. The lower social class, for example, were the farmers, slaves, uh, mentors, the medium social class, like under the gate, teacher, hotters, um, for example, the white people. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, the upper social class were formed by the people who had very good knowledge, like astronomers, doctors, engineers, mathematicians. So, and they, the, those kind of groups who had the knowledge, they live in this place, which is the central side. Those kind of platforms represent the houses of those kind of persons. Usually, they didn't have cemeteries, so you practice burials behind of their houses in the jungle places. But sometimes, when the leaders died. The families sometimes keep the body close to them, like this. This is the burial where they put a kind of body to keep the body close to them because it represents an important person. Yeah, it is the reason for which they keep some persons or some bodies of those persons close to them. And then you're going to see the temples, all those kinds of buildings were the temples. Fortunately, we don't have the evidence about the decoration. When the weather destroy those kinds of buildings, the, 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 the original characteristics, 
but was impossible to recuperate the decorations. The stone cone, which is a kind of plaster, disappeared. Nowadays, just you can see the rocks. Be careful. You want to hold my hand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can climb up this way. So this is the corridor. How I mentioned before, they use this like a temple. But in this case, they use the original kind of ceilings that the Maya people use, Maya vaulted. They accommodate those kind of rocks in this kind of form, as a kind of triangle. And then they cover those ones with flat rocks. This, co this was called by the Maya, by the archaeologists, so uh, like a temple of niches, because this is the niche. We have three of those, where they put some kind of figurines about the eight gods, maybe. Up was easy. Down, uh, we'll see. Okay. I'm going to turn off the camera and concentrate on not falling. I have like huge feet is my problem, so. That's the trick to come down sideways. Oh, yeah. Well, my question is like on this, was it all the smooth stuff and it, it just washed away over? Well, she said, didn't she say it had like uh like plaster like yeah. so this but, is basically the inside of it but if you look at the, the bottom <laughs> five feet it's like that smooth smooth yeah probably pretty yeah pretty cool wow are we gonna go up that big tall one honey yes. oh i'm so excited for that i can tell oh hold me back now run run Put get, the flip flops on and go. That's right, getting my steps in today. Who are the leaders? Like astronomers, doctors, engineers, mathematicians, teachers. And they select one person who represents this kind of city, which is going to be the maximum leader, the Halachwinik. Who is the Halachwinik in this case? In this case, who is the leader? Carl. Carl. <laughs> like uh, Carl mm -hmm. in this case. Yeah. <laughs> Position of the land. For example, this is the south side. Okay. Here, north side. That way. Hi there, Mr. Oh, Iguana. Carl came up. Oh, Carl! Carl! Well, there's another iguana. Hey there, Mr. Iguana. Hold down the fort. This is a little corridor, you see, from the different point, this world, for example, around where it's water, there are water, because this is peninsula, how we mentioned, and that is the only place where we have connection with the rest of the country. Yeah, the <laughs> cool, <laughs> the cool palapa over here on top of the... Yes, they put some, the archaeologists put some kind of palapas or touch roof. With the idea to protect some kind of decorations. Yeah. Because just were discovered few decorations in this place, like a snake, for example, or in some kind of paintings. In this case, they use hatch roof, no Mayan bolt, because it's big. Oh, how awesome.
If you like a picture, I can take you a picture if you like. Sure. To see how you. They're waving at us. She should be turned around yeah, seeing where she put her feet though. Here he comes. Come, come down. The cave and the avocado. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's a cave down there. And you see, if you look right in this area, there's an avocado in there hanging. I'll see if I can't circle it little in the video. Fruit. Little hanging fruit. It's amazing. In the Hacienda, it's a small, not too big. It's a small, but it's important in the Hacienda to this region. The family who live around of this place, they were part of the family, about the people who work during the Hacienda time in this you can see the traditional houses, some families still keep the 